drugs drove a big share of Medicare spending in 2021. And here to talk with me about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. A pleasure, Jay. And it'll be a pleasure to have you walk us through what this means. This is uh, 10 drugs driving a big share of Medicare spending. It comes from a new report that over the summertime here that Kaiser Family Foundation, other news outlets have reported it as well, that a huge concentration of the overall Medicare expenditures for prescriptions are really centered on 10 medications. Now, the fact is it's going to be very interesting going forward here because during the, pa the passing of the Inflation Reduction Act, one of the developments has been the direct negotiation of prescription drug pricing directly negotiating with the Medicare system. We'll have to see how that goes. So we'll talk more about that in another video, perchance? Well, for sure, because this will greatly affect the way that 2024 even shapes up and then the, the ongoing years. Right now, the reason that it's getting some headlines, of course, is because there's a substantial pushback from the big pharmaceutical companies who manufacture these expensive medications. In addition to that, the negotiation process for the Medicare and the negotiation of drug pricing is just about to start, but not to be in effect until 2026. So tell me a little bit more about some of these uh, prescription drugs. What, what are the most expensive ones? Well, it, it was be as you would expect, which is to for cancer, for example, and then in addition to that, you know, weight loss around diabetes. So these two, of course, with the big tickets, as well as the most number of constituents. And when you add them together, you have very, very high sticker prices. I would want to say, however, that there are a number of ways that consumers can address these. And for example, the pharmaceuticals themselves very frequently have programs which can help those persons who can provide financial documentation and receive notable cost sharing reductions when it comes to these expensive medications. Now, am I correct that some of these prescriptions are covered by Part B and some are covered by Part D? So tricky here, Bob, right? Which is that certain medications are administered in healthcare settings. When they're administered in a healthcare setting, then this is covered by original Medicare. Persons on Medigap, this becomes trans not transparent, but actually it, it's not noticed, actually. Whatever the, the, the negative of transparent is, that it is that Part B along with Medigap would result in no out-of-pocket expenses after you've met the Part B deductible for the majority of Medigap policy owners. For Medicare Advantage, however, it is far trickier because of the fact that there can be cost-sharing arrangements, even for these medi medications, which would be falling under the medical out-of-pocket maximum. So the headline is scary. Is there a bottom line takeaway for Medicare beneficiaries who uh read that story and, and then watch this video? Well, I think the main thing is the fact that this just goes to show in another example of the ongoing pressure on the Medicare system. Next year, 2024, will be the year that more people will turn 65 than in any year in American history. On top of the already 65 million Medicare beneficiaries that exist today, so you can see that slow, not slowly, and people know this, that as the population ages, the financial stress on the system and how it adjusts is going to be central reasons that people will want to stay up to date, for sure. It, it strikes me that we spend a lot of time talking about the Social Security Trust Fund uh, becoming depleted in 2033, but may, maybe not enough time talking about the Medicare Trust Fund and, and how quickly it, too, will become depleted. It's going to, these are both ongoing challenges for sure, Bob. And so 
while we're, you and I are probably not going to resolve it on a single video, the fact is, is that people are going to have slight differences in coverage and the different plans that are available to deal with that are going to evolve. Medigap, Medicare Advantage, things that you and I have talked about frequently, often I should say, is that people will want to understand what these nuances are so that they can make the best decision for themselves. Well, Jay, we covered a lot of ground. Anything we missed or anything that just bears reemphasizing? Again, there are financial assistance programs, whether they be from the pharmaceuticals, under separate videos, we've talked about other types of financial assistance, encourage people to explore those avenues first so that they are not scared away from clearly nerve wracking headlines. Jay, always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our viewers today. It's my privilege, Bob.